Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10. Welcome to the big show, Big Dance Edition. I'm pretty sure we are way past big speech time here. So I'll remind you, March Madness games are being played in the same arena that the Hoosiers movie helped make famous outside of Indiana, that is. Here at 10 Sports, well, the website, folks, is our arena of choice. Nicole Del Rosario at the controls tonight. Check it out if you need anything football related, which brings us to our game of the week. Backyard brawls are often the best kind, and there's a mutual respect with someone you share a border with, which is the case tonight with Galax in Carroll County. The Maroon Tide's new coach actually graduated from Carroll and coached there. The two schools might be 15 miles apart, but they're part of the same community. 10 Sports Eric Johnson has more from the matchup on the field tonight. Both the Maroon Tide and the Cavaliers have playmakers that can make big plays at any point during the game, but it all starts with blocking and protecting the ball, two aspects in which Galax dominated tonight. Pre-game homecoming festivities here in Hillsville included quarterback Brady Dalton. In fact, he started the game off with a huge burst down the sideline for the Cavaliers, setting them up in the red zone. But just a few plays later, we have a fumble. Galax recovers. They were turning it into points. Check out Santana Sawyers from seven yards out. 6-0 Galax lead in the first quarter. More defense to offense later. Ian Ashworth, a beautiful interception in the end zone, ending Carroll's scoring dreams yet again. It led to this. Colby Barnes catch and run. Made a man miss. 13-0 Maroon Tide are rolling. Cavaliers trying to get rolling themselves, but look who it is. Barnes crashing the party, this time on defense with the interception. Setting up his quarterback, Cole Pickett, a 30 four-yard touchdown scamper. Look at him, hook and book down the sideline. Galax defense relentless tonight. They lived in the backfield. Multiple turnovers, multiple sacks. Maroon Tide go on to a 40 to nothing victory over Carroll County. They were moving around a little bit and trying to confuse our kids and and our guys kind of settled in and did a good job. You know, they're, they're, they're young and they're learning and, 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 you know, they come to practice every day and they're yes sir, no sir. I mean, you can't ask for a better bunch of group of young kids. We knew it was going to be a tough game coming in here. And, I mean, we knew it was going to be a battle, it was going to be physical, but our young kids stepped up tonight and they played hard. I'm proud of our O-line. That's where all, all respect to them. Uh, job's definitely not done, though. Uh, we definitely want to go to where we were last year, the state championship, and hopefully end up better than this. This is just a little milestone to be careful. Carroll County suffers its first loss of the season, falling to 4-1, and one, while Galax remains unbeaten and will look to gain confidence as they move forward to an Auburn team next week. In Hillsville, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Thanks, Eric. A couple of scores for you. Fort Chiswell Pioneers winners at home. Roll Retreat goes on the road and downs Northwood, which brings me to the Blue Ridge District. Lord Botetot, King of the Hill early. Tonight they travel to Stanton River to see what the Golden Eagles have cooking. So let's pick it up. And it was a Lord Botetot lead at the half, and it would continue. Sammy Perry's going to drop back, and he will find one of his favorite receivers, Kyle Arnhold, who beats the coverage right there for the touchdown. We'll move on, and then we've got a snap to Aiden Brown. Hill's going to run left and throw it, but Zach Horton is there to victimize him right there with the interception. And Horton can play a little offense as well. Here we go. Sammy Perry is going to drop back and find Horton for yet another touchdown for Lord Botetot. Finally, how about Hunter Rice, the VMI commit? We don't finish the Lord Botetot highlight without showing him in the end zone. LB goes to 4-0, 49-6. Spotswood at William Fleming tonight. Senior night, ladies and gentlemen, for the Colonels. Early on, we had a fumble recovered by Spotswood's Noah Burtner, but hold on. William Fleming give it to Nashawn Bonds. 46-yard gallop and go at 6 to nothing. More William Fleming in this one. Deshaun Lewis finding Chris Nelson. Look at how alone he is. It's 13 to nothing. A little bit later on, more defense from William Fleming. Cross Coles, the pick, and the nice return right here. We'll speed it up for you. It would lead to Deuce Anderson's run for a touchdown. This one all William Fleming, 34 to nothing is your final. Hey, Rockbridge is a former Blue Ridge District member, now doing battle in the Valley District tonight. The undefeated Wildcats welcome Broadway. So let's get you out for that one. Here we go. The Gobblers in the house. Big pass plays. Miller J finding Luke 
My Oscar Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't call me the baloney for the first score of the game. But Rockbridge had a rocky road from there. Well, we got a, a Jay getting gobbled up on defense, fumbled it away, led to a Broadway touchdown. But not to worry, Rockbridge rallied for a 28 to 21 victory. All right, there's a tradition in tournament play to not talk about the next step until you've climbed the one in front of you. The Spartans have never been afraid of heights with another River Ridge ruckus tonight. Meanwhile, the Patriots look to take another step tonight with the Blue Demons in the house. And later, the Pioneers have a tougher climb than most in that seminal district, plus this. Hi, we're the Blacksburg cheerleaders. You're watching Person 10. Go Bruins! Let's go Bruins! Come on! All righty, Salem at Cave Spring from Bogle tonight in a River Ridge battle. Now here come the Knights and here come the Spartans up 14-0 midway through the first. Zevion Wood finding a hole and 51 yards later the burst to avoid the worst. It's 21-0 Salem. Next Salem possession, Darren Wilson finds Chase Greer and he has a rolling ball of butcher knives breaking four tackles 20 yards to the house. 28-0 Salem on their way to a 63-7 win. All right, Brooke. Well, they've already taken down three of four as PH, so they've looked good early on. Our big question now is, do they have enough to make that Class 5 playoff push that we always wait for? Right, and we just saw Salem. They gave Salem a little bit of a test. That they was did. their one lone loss, but a good way to test how good you are is facing a pretty ground-heavy offense. That's exactly what Christiansburg has. Right out of the gate, though, here's one of those guys who is a difference maker for the Patriots, Arwan Webb, with the quick TD. Then check out this play. Sean Medley literally takes the ball out of Kenyon Johnson Buchanan's hands, and that sets it up for this touchdown. Another one by Webb. Pretty complete quarter for the Patriots, but the Christiansburg run game was hard to control tonight. Here's Christian Cunningham with the touchdown. Then Johnson Buchanan scrambles one in, all tied up 21-21 at the half. But here is the true catalyst. Plays like this, forcing a ground game offense to pass and having elite secondary wow. like these guys. Stashawn Webb and John Miller pinned with the disruption. Patrick Henry beats Christiansburg 41-21. Makes a pretty good case for a Region 5 D contender. We got a lot of weapons on this team, so you know, that's one good thing about it. You know, we got we got a bunch of really good receivers, a really good quarterback, and you know, we're starting to get the running game going, so it makes us really pretty explosive. You know, defense stepped up when they needed to and Offense did a really good job, and for the second week in a row in the fourth quarter when we needed to drive, the O-line took over, and, and uh, you know Chuck Webb took over and, and got it done. And the tests keep coming. Patrick Henry heads to Pulaski next week. Back to you, App. All right, that'll be a great game. To the New River Valley, folks, uh, we've got Hidden Valley and Blacksburg, both hungry for a victory if you will. So let's get you on out for a look at that one from the NRV. First quarter, let's pick it up here after we get the teams on the field. The Bruins quarterback David Oliver rolling out. He's going to be picked off by Jacob Parton. Nice catch there and the toe tap for the interception. Second quarter, Blacksburg going to turn the tables, get some revenge. Miles Rittenauer here coming up with the diving interception to change the possession. Here are the first points of the game. Blacksburg punt going to go awry right here. That is over the punter's head for a safety. 2-0 Hidden Valley. Defensive grudge match continues. Final seconds of the opening half. Blacksburg blocks the field goal and then the scoop and scamper, but they come up just short of the touchdown. This one would eventually go to Hidden Valley. 22-0 is your final. Another score for you. Tunstall over Gretna. 14-0 is your final. All right, we're moving on. Sectionals of 33, one point down. Five, four, three, two, one. Let her fly in and out. Yeah, I was fouled. I was fouled. JF wasn't fouled. They just had a COVID pause. How they fared tonight in their first game back after this. All right, we're back to try and unravel the Seminole District. Now, Brooke, I'm going to remind you, remember the black and blue bowl? I do. It, it feels like a minute Eons ago. ago. <laughs> it feels like a minute ago, right? Well, both of those squads went on pause, as you know. Well, they were back tonight, so we're right. going to check in on them. But you know what? Brookville and Heritage, they've never left. 
And that might have been the second biggest game next to our game of the week this week because Heritage, we've seen them go crazy, ball out, and then Brookville last week, He's insane, doing what they need to ran do. the score sure. up on Two Amherst. undefeateds tonight, so exactly. something so, had to give. Something had to give. Let's find out who will take this one. The Pioneers, we're fired up, ready to go at City Stadium. The Bees with Sting first. QB Drake McDaniel connects with Stephen Pauly for the 50-yard touchdown pass. We saw a lot of that last Friday. A yeah. lot of it. Heritage trying to make it happen. QB Cam Burns gets dropped in the backfield. The ball comes loose. Chad Pouncey takes it in from 32 yards out for the TD. Man, the Pioneers would get in their groove, though. QB Elijah Steele keeps the ball and dashes down to the 25-yard line. And then a few plays later, Steele keeps the ball, takes it in for the eight-yard touchdown. Appy, Brookville takes this one 28-7. to You know what? Their defense is underrated. It is. Brookville plays just really great fundamentally sound defense. There's and no offense. question about it. Wondering about EC Glass. Now, they didn't have COVID, but they were contact traced right. at the Black and Blue Bowl. So we got they were off for a couple weeks. Now they're back. They're at Liberty. The Minutemen looking for uh, a good start here, and it didn't happen. Uh, bad snap. Ball goes pinballing. Picked up by Travion Jenkins. We changed possession. Glass trying to get a field goal. Nice job by the holder, but it gets blocked by Liberty. So no points Ooh. on the board at this point. Marcus Ingram, the short return. Neither team could get anything going. Hand off to Brandon Pearson here. But the ball's out again. Another fumble recovered by Liberty. Oh, you know Coach Woody's losing his mind oh, at this sure, point. Oh, for sure, for uh, sure. The Minutemen trying for a field goal. This gets blocked. Uh, and there, it's called, basically called a touchback right here. Glass eventually wins this game 13-6, to six, but not exactly a thing of beauty. Well, over at Williams Stadium, LCA facing Rustburg. Red Devils backed up. QB Avery Dixon dumps past to Jaden Johnson, who breaks several tackles wow. and takes it to the 7 Teen yard line. Check this out, Appy, in the college stadium. Yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? It sure does, honestly, under those lights. All right, Avery Dixon looking to find someone to pass. He finds Adion Epperson in the end zone for the eight yard touchdown to get six on the board. Then LCA in the third quarter, QB Davis Lane connects with Sullivan Holmes to the eight yard line. Oh, nice what catch. A pass. Nice catch, right? And there. then Bulldogs QB Davis Lane hands it to Cade Wyckoff, who takes it in for the score. Liberty Christian. In that Williams Stadium home field beats Rustburg 41 to 12. Very nice. Now we haven't seen Jefferson Forest since the Black and Blue Bowl either, but they're a tough task going to Amherst County to take on the Lancers. Justin Lambert first and goal, spinning in for the touchdown. Cavaliers up 14 to nothing, but here comes wow. Amherst. Second and 10 from the 35. That's Truck Robinson, although it's a pretty sleek truck right there. Right? A lot of speed, and he's in the zone. Second quarter, Lancers with the ball after an interception. Will Gregory the carry. Pretty run here, 24-yard touchdown. We've got a tie game at 14 Oh, all. my goodness. Third quarter, Cavaliers ball. Van Remortal launching it deep into traffic. That is trouble. Picked off by Amherst. They play solid defense. Of course, Coach Christmas is there, right? That right. would set up this play. C.J. Rose taking it himself for the touchdown. The Lancers with the lead 21-14. They go on to a 27-14 win over J.F. It just keeps getting interesting. Alta Vista went to Appomattox County. I don't know that anybody wants to go to Appomattox County right now. They are a rolling <laughs> ball of butcher knives. 57-12 to wow. was your final. William Campbell defeats Nelson tonight. 48 to 17. And one more for you from the area. Dan River, 39 to Chatham's 20. Okay. Now, hey, five more games tomorrow at least. With this reminder, Covington is on a COVID pause. So though their games are on hold as well. But a couple games moved because of weather, including Allegheny at Giles. That's noon at Blacksburg. And, of course, other games at Bath, at George Wythe, at Bland. And the Glenver-Radford game is 4 p.m. Again, passing that along, that is a 4 p.m. start.